So Agneta, I know you don't like my food, but it's your birthday. I like your food. Okay, I will send you my cake and I wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you, love. Hey, so it's Agneta's 72nd birthday today and there are many more things to celebrate, so let's bring together all the news that came up in the last few days and weeks. We have four topics today. First, let's take a look at the award season that seems to be coming to an end. Then we'll be talking about new ABBA releases that were announced, about Björn and Benny doing something truly magical lately, and about something really exciting, which is happening very soon. So just two days ago, the Grammy Awards were presented and ABBA was nominated for Record of the Year with I Still Have Faith in You. It was their first nomination ever for a Grammy and they did not win. For many, it would have been a surprise if ABBA had won and that hasn't got anything to do with the music or with what they achieved not only with Voyage but within the history of pop music. You would think that all of this matters, but it doesn't really for these awards. In one of my recent videos, Michael Rockester wrote there are so many people in the United States to feel about a way overdue for a Grammy Award. Believe it or not, the Grammys tend to resent foreign artists if they are not British or Canadian. They were almost treated as a novelty in the United States because they were a foreign group who were not from Great Britain. There is some truth to that. Also, the promotion for Voyage in the United States was basically non-existent, so it is more than remarkable that they entered the US charts on number two last year an incredible achievement and it is as remarkable that they did receive a nomination for the Grammy Awards after all. Jack Aldred Moon wrote, the nomination is belated recognition for their achievements, nothing more. And that's what it is, ABBA are now Grammy Award nominees. The winner was Silk Sonic with Leave the Door Open, congratulations. The Brit Awards in February had ABBA nominated for International Group of the Year. The winner was Silk Sonic Again, congratulations to Silk Sonic, for they are, of course, the last ones to be blamed, and I'm sure everyone receiving their award deserved their award for various reasons. Now, we are certainly of the opinion, well, if anyone deserves awards, it's ABBA, especially with all the ignorance from the past. Something that seems to be even more puzzling was their nomination at the iHeart Radio Music Awards for Best Comeback Album, with the winner being Adele and her first album after six years. My friend Walter from California Screaming made us aware that this award was simply received by audience voting and indeed this new category was socially voted. And I know some of you are sad that they wouldn't win all of these awards, but don't you ever forget this. Voyage reached number one in 18 countries and number two in Canada, Croatia, Poland, Slovakia, Spain and as I said even in the US. And they even got into the top 10 in countries like Japan and Italy, where I don't think they ever reached that high before. Voyage was the best-selling album in Sweden and Germany, it received gold in Australia and Poland, and platinum in Austria, Denmark, France and the UK. It's not only completely unusual in and of itself, but an incredible feat for a legacy artist that hasn't released new music for 40 years. On top of that, the album is mainly met with positive reviews and even Benny said that they never had such good reviews for any of their albums. I don't think we ever had such good reviews ever as we have for this album. So don't you worry about those awards. If they don't recognize ABBA's achievement, it's not ABBA's loss. It's the loss of the awards. And I think we couldn't care less about that. But let's take a look at what I think matters more than anything and that is the recognition from their very own home country. Because on the day following the iHeart Awards, ABBA won the Swedish government's Music Export Prize. For 50 years, ABBA have symbolized globally successful Swedish music and they have played a huge part in establishing Sweden internationally. Being able to return to the stage after 40 years is an extraordinary and immense feat. Benny was asked what he was proudest of about ABBA and he said that it was the fact that all four of them were still such good friends. This was reported to us by Karl Magnus Palm who also gave us the amazing news that Björn confirmed that all four ABBA members will be together again for the ABBA Voyage opening on the 26th of May 2022. That will be the first preview premiere before the big world premiere the following night. Before we go back to more fantastic news from Björn and Benny, let's stick to that date of the world premiere. 
for we'll be getting a new ABBA release on the very same day, what a coincidence. Let's discuss the announcement for the latest ABBA releases. First off, we'll be getting the so-called ABBA CD album box set and the LP equivalent called ABBA vinyl album box set. They contain all nine studio albums, the eight we have known and been collecting for decades, along with Voyage. An additional disc with 10 tracks contains all non-album single A-sides and a selection of B-sides together with Put On Your White Sombrero. As most of us know, this is nothing new, and in fact, it is an identical re-release that we got 12 years ago already, when it was called ABBA The Vinyl Collection. This time it is released on CD as well, and certainly Voyage has been added. But of course we also got CD box sets in the past, and those were not only covering everything that we're getting now, they were in fact much more comprehensive, again not counting the Voyage album. 14 years ago, a box set called ABBA The Albums collected all studio albums and an additional CD with 17 tracks, and here we got all single A and B sides, not just a selection thereof. This box set is still available, and even if you buy it together with Voyage individually, it will be much cheaper and more comprehensive than the upcoming box set. Three years before that, in 2005, ABBA The Complete Studio Recordings collected virtually every studio recording that was ever released, including all foreign language recordings and rarities from the past. So that was basically the ultimate ABBA box set, and I'm only talking about content here, because when it comes to the sound, that is an entirely different topic. They basically have been messing with remasters ever since. So why am I mentioning all of this? Because this upcoming release has two big problems. It has no substance and no integrity. Don't get me wrong, first of all, if you enjoy these releases, I'm all for that and really happy for you. Secondly, the problem I'm talking about has of course nothing to do with ABBA or the music itself. We know the quality of that, but especially that is the reason why, in my opinion, they deserve much better releases. If we take a look into the announcement, that's where the big problem is. They claim to have put together the new Ultimate ABBA box sets. Well, they are not ultimate, but incomplete. Who knew ABBA would return to the world last year with another album? Universal knew, and they had all the time to prepare the Ultimate ABBA box set. Therefore, it's time to update the Ultimate ABBA box sets. So they basically updated the old box sets by adding Voyage, okay, but by taking away tracks that were released before, like Cassandra, which is just missing from these new releases. The ABBA album box sets are the ultimate collection for an ABBA fan and an incredible souvenir of the group's astonishing return. Here they got one thing right, their return was astonishing, but as I said, that is all the more reason to have put a little more effort into this so-called ultimate ABBA box set. We know that Björn and Benny are reluctant to open the archives for unreleased material, but why is Universal now starting to take away bonus tracks that have been released in the past? The website Super Deluxe Edition is reporting about this box set and I think they have the answer for that. The 10-track bonus disc is not a comprehensive roundup, constricted no doubt by the running time of the vinyl record. So that's what it all comes down to now, because there is no space on vinyl, the CD counterpart has to suffer too. You know, we have all these songs, we are covered, but I pity those new fans that might want to have an ultimate ABBA box set, but then will realize that many songs are missing. It's okay to release this stuff, Universal is there to make money, and no one is forcing us to buy it, but that's beside the point. You cannot advertise it as an ultimate ABBA box set, you cannot claim that it is the ultimate collection and an incredible souvenir of the group's return when that's simply not true, because it couldn't get more obvious that they have put virtually no time and effort into all of this, and in my opinion, that's not what ABBA's music and their achievements deserve. Visually, these box sets look great, it's all shining and glimmering, but again, there is no substance to it, no integrity behind. But talking about visual presentation, we will get another release which comes two weeks later, and that will be all of our studio albums on picture disc vinyl. So if you ever wanted to have the albums on this special format, it's finally available. And we are basically getting more releases these days in digital form, and again with focus on visual presentation, for we are now getting lyric videos for 20 ABBA classics in the next few weeks. They started with Chiquitita, and I think this new version captures the beautiful, unique symmetry of ABBA, 
and at the same time is also a perfect mixture of classic ABBA and the visual futurism of the Voyage project. Back in November last year, when they were releasing the lyric videos for all the Voyage tracks, I was already thinking that it would be interesting to have lyric videos for their classic songs. Tomorrow we'll be getting the new video for Waterloo for the 48th anniversary of their victory at the Eurovision Song Contest. And maybe one day I was thinking we might get brand new lyric videos for songs that never had an official video like Honey Honey or even songs that never had any video at all, for example Move On or Our Last Summer. Let's conclude our episode and news roundup with the latest from Björn and Benny. Last weekend Björn was giving a powerful and moving speech to introduce Sweden's three-hour charity concert for the Ukraine. A few days before, on another concert, Benny was performing Abba's very own Ode to Freedom together with the Kiev soloists and Erik Eriksson's Kammerkör, conducted by Markus Josefsson. This was the grand finale of the show and it was an incredibly moving piece of music history. It is captivating and truly mesmerizing. You will find the entire performance here on YouTube. And I think this occasion should lead us right into our next episode for the Voyage series with Ode to Freedom. What do you think about that? On that note, if you're still here, thanks for staying for so long, for watching and listening, and again, a very happy birthday to Agneta. What do you folks think of the awards, ABBA's upcoming releases, the new lyric videos, and of ABBA reuniting another time for the grand opening in May? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, until then, hey though!